We're going to come back to order if all the side conversations can please end. Thank you. Um, Uh, before we uh, move along, um, a couple announcements, um, or one in particular. Um, it has been brought to my attention um, that uh, people are, some people are jumping the gun when standing, and because then those are people I see, they are the people I'm calling on. So what I'm going to ask is that, as you've noticed, after every speaker has finished speaking, I am saying that was a speech in favor or against. Is there now a speech against? So I'm going to ask that if you wish to speak, um, if you wish to speak on the motion, you wait until I say, is there a speech against or in favor? And that is when you will stand or raise your card in order to be recognized. If you stand or raise your card to be recognized before that point, I will assume that you are making a privileged motion like a point of order that allows you to interrupt the speaker. And if that is not what you are doing, I will rule you out of order as soon as I realize that. Um, is that clear? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for working with me as I uh, do this for the first time and try to get better at it. Um, okay. I'm, I'm sorry? You're doing quite well thus far. Seconded. Thank you. Um, it's, uh, I have heard that the committee that I uh, told to report back tomorrow is finished. So <laughs> if there are no objections uh, from the body of the committee and report back, the committee reporting back a little early, Gary, do you have an objection? Yeah, uh, the blue microphone, please. Gareth Kavanaugh, he, him. Part of the reason to refer to this was so that we'd have the text very clear and visible. I have found that even with myself, I'm having difficulty reading the slides. Are we yeah, gonna make- I believe that the report of the committee will make that not necessary. Okay. <laughs> uh, if that's not the case, we will deal with it, but that's my understanding. So. Uh, if there are, do you, are you objecting? Okay. Um, up at the podium. Thank you. Uh, Dave, well, excuse me. Dave Wallace, he, him, and I just wanted to point out that if the committee reports back tomorrow, we would reset the time limits. I believe if it comes back today, we'd be out of time and have basically had no time to debate the main motion itself. Okay, we can, we can deal with time by extending debate if necessary. Um, who was the gentleman who spoke first? Uh, the gentleman who spoke first is Gareth, Gareth Kavanaugh. Can you bring your, thank you. Um, one moment. Okay since, there, okay, since there have been objections raised, uh, we are going to vote on whether or not to discharge the committee. Um, we believe this is a two-thirds vote, and we're also going to do a two-thirds vote just to make darn certain. Uh, so all those in favor of discharging the committee, please raise the hand. Without report? Without report. Or, no, the committee will report when it's been discharged. Oh, okay. Discharging the committee triggers a report. Does anyone wish to appeal the ruling of the chair on that? Seeing none. Those in favor of discharging the committee, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Okay, it passes by a two-thirds vote. Um, if the committee, the committee has been discharged and will give their final report. I'll recognize Cliff Dunn up at the podium microphone. Cliff Dunn, he, him. So long story short, we were trying to avoid a situation whereby in the uh, Hugo administrators were still required to report on the final rounds involving anything that didn't make 4% but that had made the final ballot. For example, in withdrawal or disqualification heavy rounds, uh, sorry, categories such as best series is proving to be. Due to the way EPH works, we found that we really couldn't do this because of the way everything interacts and 
So this would have effectively gutted the, amend the amendment. So it would have been a pointless exercise. It would probably have actually, in that regard, been dilatory by accident. So uh, I've, I've opted to withdraw the amendment. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, are there any objections to the amendment being withdrawn? Okay, right, see none, uh, the amendment to C3 is withdrawn. Okay, I'm going to ask for unanimous consent to reset the debate time for C3 to six minutes. Are there any objections? Okay, can you please move to a microphone to state your objection? Oh, sorry. I, yes. I got confused about where we are. Perky. I, one moment. Okay, one moment. Can we, no, no, hold on. I, I can't have you guys have any conversation about what that has to do. Can we Okay. okay, apologies. Uh, I got confused about exactly what was happening. You don't need to state your objection. It just means we move to a vote. I'm sorry. Uh, those in favor of resetting the debate time to six minutes, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? Okay, the motion passes and debate time on C3 is reset at six minutes. Um, I will admit I am totally unsure whether the last, I guess it was the amendment, so that was a speech against. So do we have a speech in favor? No. Seeing none, do we have a speech against? Recognize you at the podium. Yes. Thanks. Uh, I'm Dave Wallace, he, him. And I'm the author of this handout uh, about the effect of how Middlebury East of Matters would have affected the long list for, yes. Uh, please state your point of order at the red microphone. Perry Ann, no, no. Yes, yeah. go ahead. Perry Ann, she, her. Um, I believe that the, mo the, the matter before the assembly is extending the debate time, not the no. Oh. No. We already voted, okay, never mind. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the debate time was set, the matter before us is now C3. Okay, thank you. Um, so, as I said, I, I, I wrote this up, I'm not going to read the whole thing here, but I just want to note that it, if it were followed strictly, and admittedly the administrators have discretion to present more information, but it would have radically affected the long lists for both 2017 and 2018, the last two years that we've had the uh, EPH in effect, we would have lost the long list if strictly followed, uh, by my count, 27 entries in 2017 and 23 in 2018. The details are on page two. And in particular, the short story category would have been most significantly affected. Um, we would have lost seven entries out of 16 from the long list in 2017. And those uh, seven stories would have been Lobby Taylor's Terminal, Sean McGuire's and Howland's and Lee Lowlands, Cat Lambo's Red and Tooth and Cog, Elite to Bedard's A Solaging of Ghosts, Rebecca Ann Jordan's We Are the Cultural Difference, Can I Taste You, Peter S. Beagle's The Story of Cow 2, A Cow You, and Elite to Bedard's Lullaby for the Lost World. So uh, I just want to point out this is by no means a question of minor stories by authors that nobody but a small group have ever heard of. We're talking about major authors who are on this year's Hugo List and participating in this year's program and significant stories. Um, it would also radically affected the um, graphic story category, uh, fan cast, uh, fanzine, and a couple of other the fan categories. So I believe that this is, um, you know, would have radically removed a lot of information from the current long list. I believe that the current system that we have is working well. It provides information that I value and I believe that others value as well. And I see no need to uh, do this. And I would urge us to defeat this amendment. Thank you. That was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? Uh, ben Yallo at the podium. Ben Yallo.
Elohim. Yes, it would have knocked out a bunch of things, as you say, particularly in short story. Yes, as you say, it would have knocked Chuck Tingle off the report. Um, I'm not completely sure this is a major loss. Um, what it basically does is that it says that things in categories where we get 800 or 900 or 1,000 nominations, things that get 20 nominations, I'm sorry, that's noise, that's not signal. Um, you're, barely look, you're, you're barely moving the meter. Yes, these are notable short stories. Our field is full of notable short stories, and I strongly urge our people to read as many of them as they can. But it's noise. We're not, telling pe we're not giving people a lot of information because the difference between 20 or 18 is enough to move you on or off the long list according to the existing rules, and I don't believe that that difference is a statistically significant or particularly interesting number. That was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Uh, Kate Secor at the podium microphone. How are we doing on time? 40 seconds. My name's Kate Secor. I use she, her pronouns. Dave gave you the stats, so I'm going to give you the emotion. We have an enormous field available to us now, and that's great. We have an enormous number of outlets available to us that publish amazing things all the time, and that's great. But what that means is that nobody can keep up with the entire field anymore. Maybe in the 50s you could do that. You can't do that anymore. I think that anything that says, look at the wide variety of things we have available, look at all the amazing stuff we've done, is good. And saying, oh, well, it was only 20 people, you know, 20 people is a non is a, okay, granted, non-significant number when you're looking at 1,000, but if it introduces someone to a new venue that they didn't know about, to a new author that they've never heard of, isn't that a good thing? Well timed. <laughs> right. That was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? Uh, I saw Renee up at the podium. Renee Walling, still he, him. Uh, the, the amendment clearly say that uh, rounds may be withheld. Uh, I'm willing to trust the Hugo administrators on this. Thank you. Uh, we are out of time against. Um, how are we doing on time in favor? A minute and a half. Oh, wait, is there an additional speech in favor? Dave McCarty, at the podium. I believe this is your second and final speech. It is. OK. Um, speaking as an administrator, and I don't believe I'm that different from other administrators in this regard, it's unlikely that this would ever be used on, uh, on a live Hugo. It's more, it's, or as we currently stand, it's more about when we get categories that have very low participation, and you're talking about reporting things that have effectively single-digit nominations, which is, I, I, which is not the case of anything that, was, that, that you see on the 2017 or 2018 things. The administrators care very much about protecting the reputation of the Hugos. Cutting things off um, just because it hits a line does not protect the reputation of the Hugos. Um, of keeping, from, keeping from detailing 10 things, all of which only had two people that liked them, Makes the, it makes the Hugos look a little bit silly. It's mostly a thing for the retros, but we use the same rules for both. And I think that we should uh, give the uh, judgment call to the administrators who have shown that they care deeply about the awards. Thank you. Um, I will remind everyone to please remember to state their name and pronouns at the mic. I apologize. Uh, that was a speech in favor. Seconds. Is there, we are out of time for a speech against. Is there another speech in favor? Uh, are you wishing to be recognized for a speech in favor? Oh, sorry, right. Okay, uh, yes, the podium microphone. Lisa Paddle, she, her. I think we also have to recognize that the Hugo administrators are human and 
as things stand, this is placing a tremendous burden on them. Okay. Thank you. That was um, a speech in favor. We are still out of time for a speech against. Uh, if anybody has a really quick speech in favor, seeing none, we will move to a vote. Uh, those in favor of adopting C3 short title notability still matters. Please raise the hand. Thank you. Those opposed? I'm, I'm going to call for a division. The Sergeant at Arms will tell us what we're going to do. At the red microphone. Um, okay, for those of you who have not done a division before, what we're going to do is the chair will ask you to stand or raise your yellow card um, if you are four, and we will come around and point to you. The first person we point to will say one, the next person will say two. When it gets to you, you say the next number, and as you say your number, sit down or lower your card, um, and then when we're done with the in favor, we will do the against, we'll do exactly the same thing. Joe's going to do this side of the room and I will do this side of the room. Are there any questions? They are. If you're in the back, you may vote, yes. All right. Okay, uh, will those in favor please stand or raise your card? One, two. Those against, please stand or raise the card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Go ahead, John. Twenty-two. 41 in favor and 44 against, the uh, amendment fails to be ratified. Yeah, I was afraid I was going to have to vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving along. Our next item of business is we are, so to be clear, uh, that is the business passed on from last year uh, dealt with. We are now moving on to new constitutional amendments for, uh, that are being taken up for the first time this year. Uh, if these uh, motions pass, they will then be passed on to uh, the next year's Worldcon, which is in New Zealand, <laughs> took me a second, uh, to be ratified there. Our first item is D1, short title clarification of Worldcon powers. We have set debate for this item at four minutes. It can be found on page five of your agenda. Um, and is there a member of the nitpicking and fly specking committee? There is. Uh, I will recognize Kevin at the podium. Kevin Stanley, he, him. 
This has never actually come up, but there have been rumblings of certain things happened this year where people were suggesting that WorldCon or WISFUS or something should go back and withdraw Hugo Awards from past winners. Um, this came to the Hugo Awards Marketing Committee and we uh, said, that's not possible. There's no mechanism for it. Um, people got irritated, so we'd like to make it a little more clear that every year's Worldcon runs the Hugo Awards run at that Worldcon. Only that Worldcon commi that committee has any authority over those awards at that one. No subsequent Worldcon committee can go back and go fiddling around with the Hugo Awards from a previous year. They're only responsible for their own and only their own. And, and then basically when they're done, they are done. And therefore we think this one word may at least help tell people that what you're proposing to do is mechanically impossible. Thank you. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Seeing none, is there an additional speech in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. Those in favor of D1, clarification of Worldcon powers, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those opposed? And the motion passes. Unanimously. Unanimously. Uh, to be brought forth to New Zealand next year. Okay. Uh, are you going to be speaking for all of the nitpicking and fly specking ones? Because if so, you might just want to. If you want me to, I will. Like, just hang out. If you want me to. Uh, hand, so really quickly, I'm going to ask, is there another member of the nitpicking and fly specking committee who wants to be speaking on motions, or are we? I can go ahead and do it. Okay. So just, I can do it. I can well, That's a round. Just hang out at the mic. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm saying. Because we got a lot of these to get through. Fine. And it seems easier than bouncing back and forth. Okay, we are moving to D2, short title disposition of the NASFIC ballot. Uh, on page six of your agenda, we have set a debate time of six minutes for this item. Uh, I will recognize Kevin Stanley at the podium. Kevin Stanley, he, him, once again speaking for the nitpicking fly specking committee. It is not something that happens all that often, but there is a mechanism, there are cases, and this year was one of them, where the selection of a NASFIC falls to a NASFIC committee, not to a Worldcon. Um, NASFICs don't hold business meetings. There's no, there, people have asked. Uh, therefore, there isn't any actual me mechanism for dealing with a case where the election crashes for one reason. There aren't very many cases where it could happen. We don't think there is, but um, therefore we are proposing that in the rare but possible case of a NASFIC selecting a NASFIC, such as happened this year, that the, and only in that case, the NASFIC can hold a business or shall hold a business meeting whose purview or authority extends only to dealing with matters of that particular NASFIC site selection and for the purpose of formally receiving the results of the election. Um, it is to cover this corner case that has come up twice, yeah. I believe twice, yeah, twice in the history of WISFUS has a NASFIC selected a NASFIC. So it is a corner case. Um, I, if, I would actually hold the floor and ask if there's any technical questions about this that I might yield for. I, I will yield for a short question to somebody take, uh, to, I, I'll, actually I'll yield to Mr. Dunn first and please make them short questions, we don't have a lot of time. Yes, uh, Mix Chair, Cliff Dunn, male pro pronouns, he, him. Uh, quick question, what happens if the media is convened and there is no presented committee to take up the failed site selection? I, that's up to the business meeting to decide. Is the, the, oh, the question is what happens if no, you know, it, it's, up to the, it's up to that business meeting to figure out what to do in the event of a crash. Having chaired the Westercon with a, a Westercon with a crash site selection and a four hour business meeting to solve one question. You think this is long. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm intimately familiar with this issue. Okay, but yeah, that business meeting would have to figure out. Um, I, should, I yield to Ms. Secor. Kate Secor, she, her pronouns. Does this require every NASFIC that is doing NASFIC site selection to appoint a business meeting committee in the event that it should be needed? 
That is correct. It would require it. And if they are not doing a site selection, they do not appoint a business meeting because the business meeting would have nothing to discuss. I know that doesn't necessarily mean anything to you, but yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, in the back there. <laughs> uh, Jonathan Lennox, he, him. Um, so just to be clear, the decision of the business meeting to say there will not be a NASPIC is still a valid outcome. Correct. It would be, yes. Unlike WorldCon, where the, I, I guess, I, I, I accept your question. You can sit down now. <laughs> can I get your name? Uh, oh, your yeah, name. Yes, yes, sir. Get the And I believe I've used up all the time. I, I instructed the timekeeper to let you answer this question before ringing the bell. Concisely, Thank you. please. <laughs> <laughs> it takes... I didn't have time to write a short letter. Uh, <laughs> Worldcon rules require us to pick a Worldcon. NASFIC rules do not require the selection of an NASFIC. The situation can't, the business meeting in my opinion and, and the opinion of those who wrote this is that the business meeting could choose to not hold a NASFIC should they reach a crashed election. And I've run out of time at this point, thank you. Okay, that is all of the time we have in favor. Um, is there a speech against? Kemp Bloom at the podium microphone. Kemp Bloom at the podium. The Max Chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom, and I don't think this is at all necessary or useful, and I think it could have detrimental effects. Um, the site selection administrator for a NASFIC site selection has clear instructions on what to do uh, in any possible case, except the one of a tie, in which case Robert's rule says that you are required by lottery of some kind, of some kind uh, acceptable to all the parties to determine who is the winner. The site selection administrator can only uh, report to that business meeting that there is a winner or that there will be no NASFIC. And therefore, there's nothing whatsoever for that business meeting to do. And having it held could possibly um, encourage recreational parliamentarianism. <laughs> that was a speech against. We are out of time for speeches in favor. Is there an additional speech against? Seeing none, will all those in favor of D2 disposition of the NASFIC ballot please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? And the motion passes. Um, I've discharged Kevin Stanley and instead asking Joe Van to uh, present the rest of the nitpicking and fly specking items. We are now on D3, a problem of numbers, which can be found on page six of your agenda. We have set a debate time of four minutes for this item and I will recognize Joe Van to speak, in, to speak for it. Thank you, Mixed Chairperson. Joe Van Ekren, pronouns she and her. We have a handful of uh, proposed changes by the nitpicking and fly specking community. These are mainly technicalities, just to clarify the wording to make it clear uh, for anyone who wishes to engage in recreational parliamentarianism, exactly what we mean with rules. So D3, is simply uh, addressing the issue that we haven't specifically stated that Hugo staff and site selection staff may add a member's membership number to their ballot. Right now the rules say that the member themselves have to add it, but having worked site selection, I know that members don't always have their number handy um, for various reasons, some including that their membership is being bought at the same time as they're doing their voting. So what this clarification does is permit the staff of the site selection or the Hugo administrator to add a member's number only and no other information, all other information must be entered by the voter. Thank you, that was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Seeing none, is there an additional speech in favor? Uh, yes, Joni, up at the podium. I personally, this year, had to, oh, sorry, hold on. Joni Dashoff, she, et cetera. Um, 
I personally, this year, had to go back and find my notes for my Hugo voting sign-in to find my membership number, which involved, after all, the Hugo Award Committee shit that I had to wade through, finding one small piece of paper out of close to 50. Um, so I wholeheartedly concur with this, despite your statement about buying both at once, which you can't do anymore for different reasons. That was my site selection. But there are lots of people who cannot <coughs> handily find, especially since we are not having paper printouts all the time where the label includes your membership number of the PRs, in case that wasn't clear. Uh, yeah, please return the mic to Joe. That was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Okay, and we are out of time for speeches in favor, so we will move to a vote. All those in favor of item D3, a problem of numbers, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, and it passes unanimously. Okay, right, we are now on D4. Right, sorry, the secretary asked me to pause. That was okay. unclear. It made it sound like I just didn't know what was going on. <laughs> Yeah, she can stand up. Shame. Shame. Okay, we are on item uh, D4, the needs of the one. Uh, it can be found on page seven of your agenda. We have set a debate time of four minutes for this item, and I will recognize Joe Van at the podium. Okay, this is another tidy up proposal. Uh, we have several uh, clauses in the Constitution which refer to the Hugo admins being able to move votes from one category to another, nominations from one category to another. Um, we also have one clause that refers to moving a nomination on an individual ballot from one category to another, provided that that individual does not have a full ballot in the new category. Uh, we just hadn't made it quite clear that this particular clause appear, uh, applies only to individual ballots, while the other clauses apply to categories as a whole. So that's, this is adding wording to make it clear that this one applies to individual ballots. Okay, thank you. That is a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Seeing none, is there an additional speech in favor? Okay, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of D4, the needs of the one, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? And the motion passes unanimously. Um, I would just like to say, I've had a point, I'm aware I could be asking for just unanimous consent of the body. I like when we're doing these constitutional amendments to just make the vote and make it real official. That's why I'm doing that. Uh, we are going to move on to item D5, the forward pass. This is on page eight of your agenda, and we have set a debate time for six minutes of this, and I will recognize Joe Van at the podium. This amendment refers to uh, the advent of issues relating to data, data privacy laws and GDPR, and what it does is clarifies uh, with regard to pass along of members' information that that will include not just postal addresses, but any addresses such as email addresses involved with members' information, and that this pass along must be done in compliance with all appropriate laws. So that's what this verbiage is adding. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Yes, Perry Ann up at the podium.